welcome everybody to our, our prayers for this evening and uh, we'll just start with a prayer. Now, I've taken the prayers from the, uh, the prayer handbook for this year. Um, so this is one that actually is at the start of a prayer meeting. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for allowing us to meet in this place of Zoom to grow in fellowship and love, to share in faith and experience. May we offer and encounter humility, compassion and understanding. Bless all those who are here and those who could not join us. As your love shines like a spotlight upon us all, Remind us that our actions each day help to shape your kingdom in the world. And as we answer your call to action, help us to remember the ways that you have taught through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight... I hope it might be a little bit interactive, but we'll see as we go along. So I wonder how you're all feeling today and how have you felt over the past week? Are you feeling low or are you feeling really content and happy? I think I flip between the two on a regular basis depending on what is happening in my life and very importantly in my family, my community, my country and this wider world. All this affects my mood and I think it's probably true for many people. Now I get the Daily Bread Ministries little booklets and with it uh, this, this last time there was uh, the summer newsletter. And in there, there's a short article and I'd like to share that with you today. And the title is, Seven Things to Do When You Feel Low. So the first one is, think of things to thank God for. Now they, text for that that they've given us is from the letter to the Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, I know that Jennifer did do about thanks last week, um, but if anybody wants to just to say now what they're thankful for in this last week. I know for me, I'm really thankful that I've had a holiday, a whole week away from home. That was wonderful. Just the break to have a, a, a different time. And also Jeff's had a consultation with his consultant today and that's gone well. So those are my things that I'm thankful for. And if anybody wants to butt in and wants to unmute themselves and say something that they might be thankful for or anything as we're going through, just just unmute and say, Sally, and, uh, you know, let do talk. So that's that's the first one. Now, the second one is rest in the presence of your good shepherd. And the text for this, you might realise, is the 23rd Psalm, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now we all have very busy lives, don't we? Juggling work or family or illness. But it's, what that text is saying is, just be, just be. Have some physical rest, but it's mental rest as well, isn't it? 
Now, I find that quite difficult to have mental rest. I find that um, always there's something going on around there in my brain. So I take that on board and I will try and rest in the presence of my good shepherd. Now, number three is stop carrying your burdens by yourself. And the text for this is from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So just take a minute to think about what is on your mind. Just voice things in your head and just think about What's going on? What burdens are you carrying in your life? Think about them. Just have a minute. I'm just going to stay quiet. If you want to say anything, do. But we'll just have a minute of quiet just for you to think about what burdens you might be carrying. Number four is trust in God's plan, not your own. And the text for this is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now we're always planning, aren't we? I know I am. I can't do anything unless I've planned it. I can't do what some people say is chaos management. I can't do it. I have to know what I'm doing. And I spend an awful lot of time planning that. And um, we forget, don't we, that God has a plan as well, doesn't he? He has a plan for us. And we've got, you know, how do we know that plan? Do we listen for it? He's got a plan for the church as well, hasn't he? I'm sure he has. But we've got to listen, haven't we? And we've got to listen for that plan. And not think that we know best. We've got to listen for God's plan. And number five is... Ask God to hold your worries in his loving hands. And the text for that is from uh, the first letter of Peter, chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And we do know that, don't we? That we are cared for. Lay all your worries into God's hand. I know we've just said as we were starting there that we, we the, the worry that Pam and John, they're not here tonight because, of course, that they've lost a much loved brother-in-law, Jackie's husband. And that must have been such a burden for them and for them to be so worried about Jackie and how she's coping with it. And I think for us, we worry about so many things, don't we? We're always worrying. We're always worrying. Are we saying the right thing? Are we doing the right thing? And really, if we put those worries to God, then will that make it settle in our minds? Will it make us understand that that God understands us and he will say just lay them with me and we'll sort it out 
And number six is set your focus on Jesus, not on your needs. And this one is from Matthew chapter six, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Jesus knows what, what our needs are. And we need to, if we can focus on him, then he will support us through what needs that we have. And when I was reading that text, I was thinking, no, I won't sing but it is one of my favourite hymns. I do love it. And I do love it when we can sing it in a round, when we can I sing it from both sides of, of the uh, congregation. It's lovely to be able to sing that. And then number seven is, ask Jesus for his peace and strength. And the text for this is from John's Gospel. Chapter 16, verse 33. In me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We need to try again to get that inner peace, don't we? To get his peace and strength. And knowing that Jesus we with jesus we may know that that peace is in our lives so i, I think one of the other things that that is is here in in this newsletter is it encourages to talk to god about everything tell him your anxieties your fears your problems and whatever else is on your mind Thank him for all the blessings and circumstances in your life. Make time to pray about the things and people you're thinking about and spend a little time quietly listening for him to speak. And I think that is the hardest thing, isn't it? Listening. Little, that little small voice. So I'm going to finish now with a prayer. Okay. And this is, this is one as well that, that's from the, the prayer handbook and it is titled At the End of the Day. So let us pray. At the end of the day, I bring to you my tiredness. For beneath me are your everlasting arms. At the end of the day, I bring to you my failures. For with you there is forgiveness of sin. At the end of the day, I bring to you my worries, for you know what I need before I ask. At the end of the day, I bring to you my dreams, for my hope is in you alone. At the end of the day, I come to you with nothing, for you are my all, you are with me. And that is all that matters at the end of the day. Amen. <laughs>